morning. Nice to be with you. Um, the obligatory cup of tea with honey. Um, sorry if I sound rather hoarse. My throat is still very achy. I've just been on to the doctors about it. Um, couldn't really get any joy with that. It'll keep your keep your mouth clean. Use a mouthwash and all that. I've been doing that for X. Don't know how long. My tongue has now turned green. And it's doctors. Anyhow, new subscriber. Now I believe you pronounce it Leoliam. I think so you pronounce it Leoliam. Forgive me if I got that wrong, but I assume you're Chinese and I assume you're male, but well, I could be wrong. However, thank you for subscribing. Very nice to have you on board. Hope we do stuff that you like and you find interesting. Uh, not sure whether you're which country you're in or whether you're in China. It'd be nice if you was in China because it's nice to think people all that distance away are watching my videos. That's nice. But anyway, thank you very much for subscribing. Nice to have you with us. Um, Working on our 172nd scale Swiss. Been painting the jackets red. Well, not red, that's actually cavalry brown. I always do the base colour on a red tunic, cavalry brown. That's my base color of choice for red tunics, cavalry brown. Then probably vermilion on top of that, dog vermilion or something, and then highlight with um, scarlet, do it that way. But what I thought I would do, just for a change, it won't take me very long. <coughs> so I thought I would do a paint through, I haven't done a paint through for a while. So I thought I would take a 132 figure. I have a load coming in the post actually, 132 figures. I have um, a mixed box of 100 and, think about 150 132 World War II Airfix figures. That's nice. And a big box, a big bag of, um, well a mixture of Wehrmacht, Fulschermjäger, and mountain troops mixed bag so that's nice and got some GIs coming and so forth so that's nice but what I thought I would do for paint through is I would do quickly medieval archer <coughs> which is going to be a little bit of a challenge for me because there's a little tiny bit of armour on it around the neck and the helmet and I've never painted that before so that's going to be interesting. What I will do, because I see a lot of, you know, I see a lot of you folks out there, you paint medieval figures and you paint them to such a wonderful standard. They look absolutely marvellous but you never string, <laughs> you never string the bow the archers, you always leave the bows unstrung, and that for me is um, what's the expression? Spoiling the ship for Hapeth of Tar. I mean, it's not a difficult job to do, string a bow. So, this one we will string the bow, and we'll show you, I'll show you how I do that. My method for stringing an archery bow. And we'll also put this figure on one of them, which is perfect for a 132, 135 figure. That's a, as you know, poker chip. And it will fit beautifully on that. 
<clears throat> I have boxes and boxes of these. I don't go out very much at all now because of the current situation. But when I did go out, when I did go around the charity stores, whenever I could find them at the right price, I would buy boxes and packs of these poker chips. Oh, she says spilling them. But there you go. They're ideal for this size of figure. Well, sometimes you can just pick up odd, odd little tubes of them. And they're ideal. They're ideal. So that's what we'll do. We'll do this. So the first thing I've got to do with this figure. As you can see, somebody's had a go at painting it, and not very successfully. So the first thing I'll do, really, before we can do anything with it, is I'll get that paint off. I'll drop this in a jar of cellulose thinners, <coughs> and strip all that paint off. Now, if you're going to do that, if you're going to strip a figure in cellulose thinners, Make sure it's the um, the polythene plastic type figures. Don't try it with the hard plastic figures like um, you know Tamiya kit figure or Airfix kit figure or uh, Masterbox kit figure. That type of hard plastic because the thinners will just melt the plastic. I've I've been there, done this. But this polythene type plastic. <clears throat> you can get away with it, you can drop them in the thinners and just forget all about them and it'll strip the paint off but it won't damage the plastic. I've done numerous 172nd scale figures the same, just get a handful and drop them in the jar of thinners and just leave them. Then you can go over them with a toothbrush and that paint will come off. So that's what we'll do with this one. We'll dunk him in the thinners. I'll get on with these Swiss for a while. We'll dunk this one in the thinners, strip all the paint off it, and then we'll come back and um, there's quite a lot of flash on it, mold, mold lines all around it. So we'll trim all the mold lines off. And then I'll show you how I um, string the bow my method for stringing an archery bow. So thanks for watching and thanks to, I've forgotten his name already, thanks to our Chinese friend for subscribing. Fantastic. See you on the next one. Right, back again with the obligatory our medieval archer Now I had all the paint removed, so that's nice. The cellulose thinners did their job amazingly quickly. So he's back to square one now, <clears throat> and I've been round him and removed the horrible mold line that was all around him. So we've done that. And I put a little bit of a groove, there you can, you can already see it there, down the side of the arm, just to give the arrow a bit more definition of where it's running. So the next step <coughs> is to string the bow. And I said I would show you how we did that. <coughs> so I have drilled out with a pin drill, bearing in mind you're not going to be able to drill out a 172nd figure because it's too small, you just have to use some glue if you want to string them. But for this size figure, I have drilled out, you won't be able to see it, but I've drilled out the ends of the bow, and I've also drilled a couple of holes Turn him around here. 
in the top and the bottom of the hand just to take the bowstring. So the next step is to make <clears throat> the bowstring. What are we going to use to make the bowstring? Now this is where you <laughs> this is where you have to be careful. I'll tell you why in a minute. <clears throat> My method for making a bowstring is as follows, and I will attempt to demonstrate this. Here is my, see if I can get this, show you this a bit better, my candle with my matches. And I have two pieces, do any of you know this method, this idea? It'd be interesting to know if any of you have tried this. Two pieces of sprue, old sprue. Never throw your old sprue away. Two pieces. Now this is the hard sprue from a kit. Now, I've tried this idea with polythene type sprue from figures. It doesn't really seem to want to work. You want the hard sprue from plastic kits for this. And what you do... Light your candle, take your sprue, and gently melt the ends. Come on, melt. Just melt that a bit more. Stick them together and gently pull them apart. That, that one's not going to work, so you have to try it again. You get the idea. That's not a very good one, so I would do that again. But you get the idea. I'm um, just to show you that it does work. And the reason I say the polythene type plastic, <laughs> so I burnt my finger trying to do it. I got a big blob of hot plastic on the end of my finger. And it <laughs> burnt my finger. But just to show you that the hard sprue plastic does work. There's one that went beautifully. So this is what I will now use for my bowstring on our medieval figure. So what I will do is I will now string up our bow and I'll give him a couple of coats of primer and I'll come straight back. Okay, so here's our archer, now complete with bowstring and two coats of Vallejo white primer. Sorry the light is a bit funny here at the moment. But that's our archer ready to go. So we'll do the is that? My waist being falling over. We will do the flesh tone, the face and the hands. That's what I do first on it. any figure I paint is always do the flesh tone first, get that out of the way. So we'll start off with beige red as the base colour. Move on to dark flesh. Sunny skin tone, and finally, basic skin tone. That's our four colours for the flesh tone. So I will be back when I've done flesh. Okay, so here's our archer, now complete with bowstring, and two coats of Vallejo white primer. 
Sorry, the light is a bit funny here at the moment. But that's our archer ready to go. So we'll do the heck was that? My waist been falling over. We will do the flesh tone, the face and the hands. That's what I do first on it. any figure I paint is always do the flesh tone first, get that out of the way. So we'll start off with beige red as the base colour. Move on to dark flesh. Sunny skin tone. And finally basic skin tone. That's our four colours for the flesh tone. So I will be back when I've done the flesh. Okay, so here's our archer now with the flesh tones done and all the highlights. I gotta say with this figure the facial detail on it is not great but we've done the best we can sort of do with it. So what I will do now is I will do the base colour on the legs and on the hose I suppose you would call them and on the surplus which I've decided to do two colours one half will be red and one half will be white so we'll do it in split colour so we'll do the base colours on that and I'll come back and show you well back me again here's the base coats for the hose and the surplus So I'll now do the highlights on the surplus. I'll probably do the highlights on the hose as well, I suppose, whilst I'm about it. So one half of the surplus will be red, so the highlights will be dark vermilion and scarlet. The other side will end up sort of white, so I'll do um, ivory and then very fine highlight with some white the green I'll just add some white to the green that I've used and just up, up it a bit and just do the highlights with that you'll see it all when I've done it anyway so see you in a minute well back with you again um, as you can see I changed my appearance this is another day didn't think it would take this long actually but you know you paint a bit, you do a piece to camera, you check that, you watch it again, check that if it's wrong, you reshoot that piece of footage and so it, it does take a bit of time. But anyway, our figure has had his surplus painted, half red, half white. With all the highlights. A bit difficult to see in this light. And also the hose have been painted with the highlights. And there's a couple of things I've noticed with this figure. Bearing in mind this figure is only for, for demonstration purposes. But if you look closely, the top part of the string is too far back in the hand. It should be forward a bit and in line with the bottom of this and the string. But I wasn't going to rip it out and redo it again. I just want to get this figure finished so I can get back onto the Swiss that I'm doing. So that's that. And the second thing is, I don't know whether you see it or not, you probably can't see it on this, there is an injector pin mark in his back, a very faint injector pin mark in his back. That, you know, I only noticed once I started painting. Ah, should have got rid of that. But... You know, this is just, like I say, just a demonstration piece to show you that you can string a bow and it looks much better for it, and so on and so forth. So, our next step, anyway, after we've had a cup of tea, is to do the next layer under the surplus, which I'm going to do in a lightish 
grey colour and then the layer under that which is a shirt which would be a um, so canvas type shirt I guess linen type shirt so I'll use some stone grey for that and then some ivory just to give him a linen sort of shirt effect it's starting to look very nice the only thing that really lets this figure down I'll tell you what really lets this figure down is the detailing on the face which is not really very good it's not very crisp and very clear it lets this figure down otherwise it, it's quite a nice figure but I still think a row of these rowed up all done would look very nice but anyway I'll get on with that and I'll see you when I've done well here we go that's the shirt and the I don't know what you call that thing between the surplus and the shirt I don't know what you call that but it, it's it's done anyway and you'll notice I've also done the chainmail black. So what we'll do in a little bit is we'll go over that with some um, gun metal, maybe a little tiny bit of silver just on top of that. But what I'm going to do now with this fellow, after I've had another cup of tea, is I'm going to do all the leather. So that's the quiver for the arrows, <coughs> boots, strap on his right wrist, belts, and probably the sword scabbard as well. I don't know whether that would be leather or metal, I don't know, but I'm going to do it leather anyway. So, coming along very nicely, turning into a very nice miniature. So we'll get all the leather work done and we'll highlight it. The colour I'm using for that, by the way, is Vallejo Beige Brown. I don't want to go too dark with it. I do have 62 Humboldt, which is listed as leather, <coughs> but to me, I don't know what you think, but to me, it's a bit bright. To me, it's just a little bit too light. Might use it for a highlight, perhaps. But we're going to go with the beige brown anyway, see how that looks. So I'll see you when I've had a cup of tea and done the leather. So, here's our figure now with all the leather work done. The boots, quiver, scabbard, belts, and wristband. So what we'll do now is we'll go over the chain mail around the bottom here and up here. And we'll go over that with some Tamiya gun metal. And maybe over the top of that some, oh I don't know, I've got a choice of metallic grey. chrome silver or flat aluminium I'll, I'll use one of them and we'll probably do the helmet at the same time we'll do that with um, I think we'll start off with gun metal on that and then we'll give it some highlights so see you when I'm done so our guy is now starting to look pretty good that's the chain mail done, a dry brush of gun metal and then a little bit of well, I either use flat aluminium or chrome silver I think it was flat aluminium I used just on top of the gun metal <coughs> and the helmet that was done with metallic grey flat aluminium and then some chrome silver So he's really starting to look the real deal now. And you might notice that 
I put a little bit of colour there on the end of the quiver and a little bit on the bottom of the scabbard and I done the point on the arrow as well. So getting towards the end now. Next step is <coughs> excuse me, losing my voice. Next step is to do the bow. Now that would have been made of you, so the reasonably light colour. So we'll do that and get that painted up and highlighted. And um, one step nearer the end, I guess. But starting to look, starting to look very nice now. I am pleased. Well, nearly finished. Nearly finished. Our bow and our bowman has been done. And that was done with Iraqi sand. And then I just mix in a little bit of white with it, just for the highlight. And then a little bit more white for the second highlight on the bow. And I used the first highlight to do the bowstring. The um, feathers on the arrows I did with Iraqi sand. Then I dry brushed over some white on them. So that's the arrows done. So all that's left to do now is the shafts on the arrows and then that's our guy done. So I'll get a little bit of um, some kind of light wood colour and we'll do the shafts on the arrows. Um, oh, I'll put a bit of brown on the base. But the main thing is the shafts on the arrows, so we'll get them done and we'll get this guy finished. See you in a minute. Well there we go, that's our guy finished. <coughs> Excuse me. There he is. So, what I used for the um, shafts of the arrows was Humble 110 which is listed as natural wood. So we put on a bit of that and for highlight we did what we do a lot of the time is we just take that colour and add some white to it and bring it up a bit and do a highlight. But that is our guy finished. Base looks a little bit messy but that doesn't matter because most of that will be under filler anyway when it's dry and done. It'll be on the gaming token. So I'm going to let this guy dry out now for well, a couple of hours or something like that. And I'll give it the obligatory couple of coats of varnish just to protect all that hard work. Then we'll put it on our base and we'll start doing the base. So see you when this guy's varnished. So here's our figure fully painted, two coats of varnish and now on the gaming token <coughs> which makes an ideal base. So next step is to put some filler on the base. Hopefully there'll be enough left in this um, to do this job. I don't want to have to go to the store and get any more, but hopefully there'll be enough. And I'll use my little... I don't know what this was for originally. Um, if I had to guess, something like cream cheese or something like that. I have two or three of these, but it's perfect for doing this job. And what I've also done is... I've cut a stake <coughs> to go in front of our figure the mangle stop the cavalry charging him and I've also that I'm going to stick in the ground beside him made some arrows they were a hell of a job to do I tell you well, the shafts were alright the shafts are just 
Sally down match decks, that's, that's a problem. He was putting the flights on them, there was a pain in the neck, really. But anyway, they're done. <coughs> so we'll put a bit of filler on the base. I hope we have got enough. You might have to, when we put the steak in, we might have to support the steak at an angle. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, perfect tool for doing this job. Hopefully we're going to get this steak in here. Hopefully there'll be enough sort of filler on the thing to support it. We will see. Time will tell. Get it on my fingers. Yeah, doing those <coughs> fletchings on the arrows was um, really quite a drag. I'm putting quite a bit of filler on this because I want shit, a certain amount to support that stake. So that's not too bad. I'm going to quit at that. Obviously needless to say it'll all be painted brown. I don't usually get in this much of a mess with this stuff. I think I do need a new tub of that. I think that's going a bit... a bit sour. Where's my tweezers? Hopefully we'll get these arrows stuck in here. Feeling that I'm going to have to support this stake somehow. Hmm. Not so bad. None so bad. Right. Where's my stake? Now this I'm probably going to have to. Support. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So I can't show you the stake in the ground at the moment. You'll see that <coughs> when the polish um, household filler I'm to, now when the household filler is set, you'll see that with the stake in the ground and the arrows and so we'll let that set anyway and then we'll come back, leave my fingers and we'll we'll come back. Well, here is our 
figure now with the groundwork added the filler and as you can see I've added the arrows and the spike in the front So what I'll do is I'll get on and I'll give the groundwork a coat of brown, something like raw umber or something like that. I'll paint the shafts of the arrows, natural wood, and I'll paint the spike as well. I'll get the spike done. But it's starting to look the real deal. So I'll see you when I've done. Well, here we go. That's the ground painted brown. I used, um, I'm trying to think what I used for that now. Um, burnt umber. That was it. Burnt umber. The spike has been painted natural wood and give it a, a quick wash of grey green over the top and a little bit of Iraqi sand on the point just to show where it's been sort of chopped with an axe. The arrows have been painted in the arrow shafts with natural wood. So all we've got to do now is go over the ground, now it's dry, go over the ground with very very fine highlight of um, yellow ochre and a even finer highlight of Iraqi sand. So when we've done that, that will be the painting finished. The obligatory cup of tea. Well here's the groundwork. I don't know whether you can see the highlights or not in this. I have the curtains pulled because the sun is beating through this window. So I have the curtains pulled and the lights on. That's the ground highlighted. So all we've got to do now is just add, for those of you that don't know or are new, new to all this, add a bit of static grass to the base. And maybe a grass tuft. And that'll be job done. So I'll see you when that's done and we're finished. Well, here's our guy, finally finished. Pretty happy. A couple of little things that could have been better, like the injector pin mark in his back that we inadvertently left. I'm not entirely satisfied with the top, top string on the bow. I mean, that's... But it was just a demonstration to show you that um, you can string a bow and it does look better for it. Um, Alright, it's not a Alpine miniature or a um, resin figure or anything like that. It's just a basic airfix figure. So, yeah, pretty happy. Pretty happy. Didn't think it would take that long. In actual fact, it's taken me about four days. What with all the filming and everything and letting layers of paint dry and all the rest of it. Whereas painting a whole batch of figures, you know, by the time you get back to the first one the paint's dry. Whereas this is just one figure, so you're waiting for it to dry and so it took me yeah, it took me about four days. But what I'll do is I'll put this on the um, turntable and you can get a proper look at it um, but that's our paint through the medieval bowman hope you enjoyed it um, usual rules apply I guess thanks for subscribing thanks for your comments um, we'll see you on the up next update for the Swiss Light Infantry